Are you about ready? <laughs> I'm, I'm worse than a girl. I know. Be careful. My microphone's right there. Okay. Yeah. Worse than a girl. Are you going to introduce us? Hey, Bill and Deb. <laughs> Hi. How's everybody doing? <laughs> hey. Okay. What we... uh. Uh, we're going to get right into Topic Tuesday. Topic Tuesday. And it has to do with the weather. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Sure enough. And uh, basically what we're going to do here is we're going to give you a few tips if you're in the middle of a build or considering a build, things to consider when it comes to running your plumbing, especially if you're going to be in um, cold climates. Cold weather climates. And to be honest with you, for both of our trailers we've built, we never planned on being in cold weather, but we have been yes. in cold weather we have. in both of them. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> really cold weather. Really cold weather. And there's something we need to get out of the way right quick, uh, as per and it pertains to that as well. Uh, a video we did right shortly after we got the mini split, and we were talking about the mini split. We commented in one of our videos that uh, uh, we don't expect the mini split to. Uh, help us uh, keep us very warm in the cold cold weather and it's something to that effect and the word here is we don't expect <laughs> yeah yeah and uh, we got an email from a gentleman here wanting to know what we did for auxiliary heat because of uh, what we stated in a video you know a ways back and quite honestly we didn't have a whole lot to base that on at the time we have been in cold weather with this trailer down, uh, in the teens. down in the teens, yes. And the mini split did just fine. Uh, we could have ran you out of here. What we were referring to at the time, if I recall, and I didn't go back and actually find the video, but I'm pretty sure what we were referring to at the time is when we had a house in Bella Vista, Arkansas. And of course, you know, it was built, I'm trying to think when it was built, well, probably in the it's just like 80s. today, my, yeah. our daughter's outside was minus five. Uh -huh. They have a heat pump, right. which is kind of, but it's a 30-year-old Right, it's pump. an old school heat pump. She said it was doing good to keep the house at 67. Right, right, right. So that's what we were basing that comment exactly, on. Exactly, because I remember in our house, uh, we had big cathedral ceilings in the living room. Uh, we would act, we would get cold in the living room. Yeah. You know, now the bedrooms would be... Uh, more decent because they didn't have the high ceilings but in that in the living room the only way we could stay warm in the living room while we were watching tv we had a little mr buddy heater and we'd set it up in the <clears throat> middle of the floor and then we would turn on our ceiling fan on low in a way that it would pull the heat up and then force it back down and uh we went through quite a bit of little propane bottles doing that but i think that's where that came yes. from um uh, Technology today, especially with the mini splits the way they are, um, you can be down in the teens and you shouldn't really have any problem. At least we haven't had any issues. We so let's get that out of the way. Okay. Yeah. Now, be that as it may, what we are expecting here uh, in a few days, weather has been really strange here in Florida. Uh, not what we're used to this time of the year when we come down here. It's been crazy. However, we will take it. Over, over what what our kids are going through up in Northwest Arkansas, mm -hmm. uh, man, it's just it, it's just brutal up there, and all through the central part of the country, and even down in parts of Louisiana, and places like that. In fact, if you're experiencing cold weather that you're not used to, put it in the comments. Mm -hmm. Let us know where you are and uh, and uh, you know what it's doing because this is a uh, it's. It's, it's affecting a, a lot of people. Yes, yeah, it's just a lot crazy. Yeah, I was looking at a video of all the snow that they're having in Nashville, you know. But um, anyway, we expect the temperatures here, uh, well, by tomorrow morning, as a matter of fact. We expect the temperatures to drop down uh, in the upper 20s to low 30s. You know, I, th I think at one time they were saying 25. They've since upgraded that to around 30 for right. the low here. Right. But uh, come... I think also Friday morning or Saturday morning early, we're st they're still predicting a possibility of temperatures being down around 28 or so. Now, yeah. when we built the red trailer, uh, we we in fact our first night out we experienced nine degree weather. 
Yes. With a wind chill factor of minus four, if I remember. I mean, it was really, really yes. cold. It was one of those freak fronts that came through on the 1st of March in <clears throat> Northwest Arkansas, the very first night out. And we did have a little bit of our plumbing freeze. Yes, but we yeah. just figured out what we had done wrong. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <coughs> Uh, what we had done wrong, which we didn't think much about at the time, what we had done wrong was, well, one of the things was that we, when we installed our PEX pipe, which we thought was the best thing in the world to use for plumbing was PEX pipe. And I still believe that to this day. I mean, this whole trailer is plumbed with PEX pipe. Um, we actually installed it right up against the wall, even though the wall was insulated uh, <clears throat> with a total of one and three quarter inch foam board insulation. And then we ran the PEX pipe right up against the wall with them little clips you can get at Home Depot and, uh, and uh, Lowe's where you just simply just uh, clip it over the pipe and then it's got a little preset nail already in the little plastic clip and you just drive it in, <clears throat> you know, into the board that you're mounting it to. Um, but we put the pipes right up against the wall. And for a brief period there on that super, super cold night, we had some plumbing freeze. Yes. You know, and it didn't... All it took was uh, firing up a hairdryer yeah, and, and running it down, and... you know, along where we knew where the pipe was froze and it unfroze it. But we did have freezing pipes. So when we built this trailer, uh, one thing that we remembered, we remembered that experience. And one thing we told ourselves was we, even though we do not embed anything into the walls, electrical or plumbing at all, into the exterior walls, uh, we were not going to install the plumbing right up against the outside the in, walls. In, yeah, the outside of the inside, <laughs> the inside of the outside walls. Does that make sense? <laughs> Think about it. I know. But so what we did, and hopefully you're looking at some photos now. What we did was I cut little or blocks of two by twos and we shot them along the wall first and then ran our plumbing all along those and using those little clips, so you know. So it's got airflow right. all around. So it's, and we have vents, little, right. little Yeah, we got little vents here and there, you know, throughout so that flow. warm air can flow. But uh, that's what we did uh, to keep that from happening. And we, we experienced some pretty cold temperatures last year. Never, we've never had an issue with any kind of freezing at all. No. With and, this. It, and as far as temperature for our comfort, yeah, we haven't had any problem with right that at, at all with the mini split None only whatsoever. the mini split. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We don't have anything for auxiliary heat. That's mm -hmm. what the what the question was. The gentleman asked us is, you know, what do we use for auxiliary heat? Well, we don't. We use the mini split. Right. And uh, we now had, we were gifted with a gift. What was that? Our, our heated mattress. Oh yeah. <laughs> Yeah, uh, but, mm. <laughs> some some friends of ours said, you know, we have this uh, heated mattress pad and we just love it and we think you should have one too. And we said, yeah, okay, well, we'll yeah, get one on someday. The and next thing we know, they had, you got know, got us, us one. one and sent us one. <laughs> and I don't know how in the world we got by without that. That just makes all the difference in but the world. But to be honest but, with you, when we're running yeah. the heated mattress pad, yeah. about, I don't know, 11 o'clock at night, I reach over and turn off the heat. Yeah. I mean, with because I have the remote, I just turn off the heat. Yeah. Because we are just fine. Yeah. In here, about six in the morning, I flip the heat back on yeah. just to take the chill off. Even if it gets down into the forties at night, you yeah. know, we're just fine in here uh, with our heated mattress pad. Now the heat I is highly recommend those. Yeah, people. the heat is mat <laughs> the heated mattress pad. Um, Takes is very it? Little. Yeah, but it is does run off of AC current, but it takes very little. I think uh, Marvin had a watt meter that he plugged into it, and it. I it don't even. A, it was almost nothing. Yeah, it was. It was really <laughs> very, very small now. amount. Can't remember the number, but it was really, you know, very small amount. And it's adjustable as as far as how hot you want it, and you can make it too hot. Um, you know, and and it's also adjustable as to how long. Yeah, it's got uh, up a timer. to 12 hours, yeah. I think. It's, 12 hours, and uh, it could go all the way up to eight, I think. Yeah, never eight on the, really yeah, the yeah. The most I've ever read mine is at six, but we're kind of getting off the subject yes, here I'm a little sorry. bit with the heated mattress pad, but <laughs> it's something you might want to think about. <laughs> yes. You know. Um, now, 
here we covered the fact that we we what we did we took little two by two blocks you know and we put them along the wall everywhere where there was going to be plumbing running along the wall so that we have a full inch and a half clearance between the outside wall and where the plumbing is running and for instance right underneath here uh, it's kind of hard to see of course right now and I'm not going to dig everything out just to show you <laughs> but the wall right behind this table we actually built it out um, there's a cavity there that's roughly about that deep uh, you know it's about the depth of this right yeah. here because I built inches. all that off of that about four or five inches and mm -hmm. we have our plumbing running down through that cavity right there and we have a cover board down here but it can easily be removed with just a few screws if we ever had to get in there and service any of the pipes or anything but we have that area there um, and one thing we do need to do one of these days is we don't have any vents in that cover no, and I thought and, you about know, that. last winter I didn't have doors yeah that's true we didn't but we if we had to because of the way these are we could crack them you know if we thought that uh yeah. of course there's no plumbing over here no that side doesn't yeah. well, well they this can't side. see that side but um and another thing too if there's a way you can incorporate this in your design try to put your holding tanks inside inside rather than outside uh now you can um you know use heating pads you know to mount to your tanks and things like this but uh what's one reason why though we opted to put our tanks inside and the tanks are under the bed we have a 65 gallon freshwater tank under the bed and we also have our 65 gallon uh waste tank under the bed right here and we don't have to worry about them freezing uh, right. because they're in here in, in a in a climate control climate you and know it's, and it's like today since we're expecting such cool temperatures tonight mm -hmm. we went ahead of course and filled our fresh water tank right and we don't have to worry about our water hose hooked up we exactly. don't have to worry about that yeah. kind of thing yeah and that was a learning process for us i think oh yeah that was i don't know why we didn't <laughs> think about that but you know that first night yeah, we five years ago <clears throat> we uh, didn't even think about that and of course our we had it hooked on to the water faucet, you know, there at the campground. And we're <laughs> the, probably the reason that the hose no froze. that water turned on yeah. in the winter. <laughs> the hose froze. And of course we went and bought a heated hose uh, right after that happened. But uh, and you still, still had a standpipe coming yeah. out of the ground. And when we've got that thing open, you know, so we could have water flowing in the trailer. Um, there wasn't anything to keep that standpipe from freezing, which it did. It yeah. froze too. Yeah. So, uh, and I Live wasn't, and learn. yeah, <laughs> now when we were park attendants, we had the same issue, but what we did there was I, knowing we were going to be there all through the winter that one year, uh, there in Arkansas, I went ahead and got heat tape, you know, and wrapped it around the standpipe. And then I put insulation around that, uh, you know, that standpipe went from that big around to about that big around by the time and I was we, done. And where the inlet comes into the trailer, mm -hmm. you know, that little door, we opened that little door and stuffed it full, full of, of insulation. Full of fiberglass insulation, stuffed the whole because thing full. Because that's another connection mm -hmm. that could get yep. too cold. Yep. And also on the red trailer, we also had an outdoor shower, shower. hookup. We opened the door on that and we stuffed insulation all around that as well. Uh, you know, cause, of course, we're not going to be using that through the winter, but we took all those precautions back when we had the red trailer uh, uh, just to uh, keep it from freezing. And, and we had some, oh man, we had several uh, nights and days where we got down into the low teens and we never, ever, ever had a uh, waterline freeze then once we took those precautions. What we had also done in the red trailer because remember in the red trailer we had the plumbing right up against the wall we actually went down and bought louvered vents and all the cabinet doors where we knew there was plumbing behind we actually took the cabinet doors off cut a square hole put the louvered vent on there and it matched the it didn't look bad you know no. but then it allowed air to flow around right. you know without inside leaving there. the cabinet doors open because right. i couldn't leave the cabinet doors open because as you know we have a cat right so oh yeah oh yeah and she i didn't want her in the cabinet but anyway that's just something to think about you know when you're when you're if you're considering a build and uh, but think about that don't run your plumbing right up against the wall because even though we're nice and cozy in here on a really really cold night even though we have an inch and three quarters in, uh, foam insulation on the walls, when you touch the walls, they're cold. They're cold. Yeah, they're still going to be cold. And uh, 
not as cold as what it is outside, but there's def definitely a difference. You definitely notice the fact that the walls are cold. So try to keep that plumbing extended off of the walls, you know, wherever you're going to run it, uh, especially if you're going to be in cold weather climates. And even though you're not planning on it, it's just like we just said. We, well, never, we never planned on being in cold yeah. either. <laughs> so many, yeah. So many other benefits to that too. Like if you have a, your, your, your pipes will be quieter. You know, your plumbing, yeah. like if you have a hammer situation going on or something like that, which you got to figure out what's causing that, mm -hmm. but it'll be quieter. You won't have them rattling and stuff like that. And if they're, if they're rattling up against the wall, man, it just resonates throughout the whole trailer. So, uh, you know, that's something else to think about. Anyway, that's it. That's topic two. I hope, hope we didn't <laughs> talk too much. I hope, uh, hope uh, this was understandable. If you have any questions, put them in the comments, and I'll, we'll try hard to answer those questions. Um, and on, on to another subject. Uh, me and my good friend uh, Jerry, we worked on a project yesterday, and we'll be showing you some video on that here before too long. It's pretty cool. Uh, I'm very impressed with the product. That's all I can say. <laughs> onwards and upwards. Yeah, onwards and upwards. And uh, <sighs> we did sell our kayaks. Those that follow us, you remember we might have we put up a video saying our kayaks were for sale. We sold them. We did replace them with an inflatable kayak. But it's not been warm inflatable. enough to get in the water. Yeah, and when we get that thing in the water and test it out, we'll let you know what we think. And then we, this is one that we bought with our own money. Nobody sent this to us to try. But uh, it's got a really good weight capacity. And that's what we needed because uh, one of us is a little hefty. Hmm. One of us. One of us. Yeah. Hmm. Yep. Although. All right, you're getting off topic again. Okay, <laughs> we're gonna let you go, folks. This is Bill and Deb with I Ride Tiny House Adventures, and you know exactly what we're gonna say. We are not camping. We are living. Y'all get out there and do some living, and we will see you again soon. Bye bye now. Bye bye.